Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we are going to take a look at Simple Screen Recorder. Simple Screen Recorder is an awesome little application that allows you to capture video on your screen if you're running Linux and record audio at the same time. People ask me all the time, what software do you use to make your YouTube videos? This is it. This is the main one that I use. Once in a great while, I do a little video editing, but not very often. Most of these videos are a live take. I just sit down, start talking, show you stuff, record, and then post it. And uh, the software that makes it possible for me to do that is Simple Screen Recorder. It is truly awesome. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to minimize that instance. I'm going to open up another Simple Screen Recorder so I can step you through how it works and first you get the introduction page and then the next page that you'll get is where you can set things up so going through the settings very quickly here you can capture the entire screen you can capture a rectangle you can capture a rectangle and have it follow the cursor around and you can also capture OpenGL directly which is nice if you're doing let's play videos where you're going to be playing video games and talking about them and then down here we have where you can set the, uh, the, you know, the dimensions of your rectangle or you can just drag and do that. It's pretty easy to uh, get that set up if you want to do a rectangle. Then we have your frame rate and I use 30 frames a second and that's pretty much uh, the, you know, what most people are going to want to use. You can do it as high as 60 or you can drop this frame rate down. I had one machine that I used to do videos from all the time that just simply could not handle doing 30 frames per second because it was old so I dropped it to 15 and it worked okay and then down here we have our audio settings and you can choose to use either ALSA Jack or Pulse Audio. I use Pulse. It works just fine. And here are all the Pulse Audio mapped input devices. So I just choose the microphone. And what's nice is you have this refresh button down here. So if you start the program without having your microphone plugged in, then you go, oh, I got to plug that in. You can refresh that and it'll find it and you can map that in there. Okay, so the next screen that you see uh, shows you what kind of file you're going to create and allows you to change parameters on that. I have it set up to to record to a generic file name which is HP screencast so every time that I make a video it always makes a file called HP screencast I'm using a Matroska container because uh, it is accepted just about anywhere and YouTube seems to like it an awful lot H264 is the video codec because it's fast and then I have it set for the uh, standard amount of compression and then I have this setting down here where it says ultra fast and what this does is, is it uh, creates bigger files if it's ultra fast but it also bogs down the machine less so if you're wanting to create really tiny files with lots of compression yeah you can do that but it actually takes up a lot of processor time to create those files to begin with so I set it for ultra fast audio wise the uh, default, I believe, here is uh, AAC, but you can choose MP3 or Vorbis here. Uh, you can also choose Uncompressed, and what I choose is Other, and I have the FLAC Kodak installed on this machine. Now, I used to use Vorbis at 128 bits per second, and that was okay. You guys have heard the videos. They're fine. But recently I switched over to using FLAC so I could get uncompressed audio just uh, because I was hearing a, a little bit of the artifacts from the Vorbis compression and FLAC runs just as fast as Vorbis does. And when you're using FLAC, uh, which is a lossless codec by the way, uh, this down here, this doesn't count the bitrate. So moving on. We have all that set up. It's going to ask me, do I really want to record over the file that's already there? And I say, yes. Now, it's, I'm not actually going to hit record because we're recording it right now. <laughs> but on this final screen, you got some choices here. You can uh, use uh, the uh, hotkeys. And I definitely use that. Control R starts a recording and Control R again will pause a recording. And then you can tell it, well, each time that I start a new recording, do you want me to start a new file or just add to it? So if I would click Control-R, it would start recording. If I would click Control-R, it would pause it. 
and then I could come back and pick up where I left off. That's how I have it set up. But if you know that you're going to be editing these for later, you can have it uh, make more files, which would, in my case, be HP Screencast 1, 2, 3, 4, dot MKV. That's how it would do it. But I just create one file. Then it tells you about what's going on here and your settings, just so you can verify that before you hit record. And then you can also get a screen preview of what's going on. So we have a little screen there and we have an audio meter that's telling me that the audio is working. And that is it. So if I wanted to record this, I would hit record, but I'm not going to do it simply because of the fact that we're already recording on this one right here. So let me show you real quick before I wrap this little video up that it is very light on system resources even though we are capturing high definition video here and uh, lossless audio so this is how much it takes to actually record the video and you have to kind of keep this in mind because uh, your programs and things are going to run a little slower when you're capturing video and in the case of a very low resource machine you may want to do things to try and limit that like lower the frame rate and uh, other things that you can do to uh, take up a little bit less of the processor time with the video capture but this is not bad not bad at all and it works it works okay so uh, comparing this to other screen capturing software that I have tried and boy I have tried a lot of them this is absolutely the best it's the most reliable I don't get corrupt files one of the things I really like about it is the fact that when I stop recording something the file is already there it doesn't have to go back and encode anything so that's nice the other thing that it does is that the uh, hotkeys are very responsive in other words when I hit record it's recording it's right there and when I hit stop it stops immediately there's no lag and uh, the other piece of software that I was using for a little while was called VocoScreen and VocoScreen is pretty cool actually I like it and it does some things that simple screen recorder doesn't but the problem is, is that when I would hit the uh, hotkey to stop it, what it would do is it would actually cut the end off of what I said. It was like there was a little bit of lag and it hadn't encoded everything. So what it does is, is that it, it just cuts it right off. And it was, it was kind of stupid because I had these videos where I'm saying, but, and I never got to say goodbye. You know, it was like that. So anyway, Simple Screen Recorder is the best one that I have used so far and it's very flexible and you can do a lot with it. Now, how do you get Simple Screen Recorder? Well, I figured I would show you that very quickly before I closed up this video. So go to your web browser and do a search for Simple Screen Recorder, all one word, and then it will come to the Simple Screen Recorder website where you will find that there are all kinds of very groovy demonstrations here and also how to download and install it on whatever Linux distribution you happen to be using. Now, it's hard to get it going on Debian, but you can always go get an app image of Simple Screen Recorder. But pretty much everywhere else, it's either just hooking up a PPA or it is uh, downloading a package. So that is pretty cool. Simple Screen Recorder, the most awesome screen capturing software on the planet. And if you do use it, would you please, please consider sending a donation here to Martin Barrett so that uh, he will actually keep making the program. Because <laughs> I don't think I could do this. If, if this simple screen recorder went away tomorrow, then I couldn't do these videos. I'd be very hard pressed. Yeah, I know about OBS, gang. It's too complicated for me. This works great for what I do. So thank you for watching the video. Be sure to check out Easy Linux online. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great stories about Linux from contributors such as myself. And I won't use the hotkey. I will actually just pause the recording and say goodbye. Bye, gang.